Hello, I'm the Dominator Stu Allen, and this week we're talking to my tag team partner, Titan John Cosell. Enough of that bollocks. Right, hello, good uh, good day to you, wherever you are. Uh, I'm Stu Allen, this is Stiff Right Hand Podcast. I'm joined here by my wife, uh, Tanya. Hello. Who uh, you listened to last week, hopefully. And, uh, having me back. Well, you know, you're, you're here, aren't <laughs> I was you? About. You, you, you? You live here and all. <laughs> oh, so, <shit. laughs> so uh, yeah, we've had uh, fantastic numbers um, on the downloads. Our first week, we had um, over 3,160 downloads. So, that was, uh, thank you ever so much for that. Really appreciate it, uh, listening to my silly ramblings. A um, few little things have been happening this week. Uh, you've been involved with Gay Pride, haven't you? <laughs> been supporting Hastings right oh well it's all gay isn't it it was a bit gay it was freaking fabulous actually it was wonderful you all got dressed up like the rocky horror show well, I, wasn't all dressed, of them. I wasn't dressed up as the whole show <laughs> you were i was columbia and it was pretty great we were down at um, the stables theater in hastings um at a live action screening of the movie and uh, the whole team dressed up as rocky horror characters and it was just Great, one of our nice. one of our students, Ken, and he was there, and he looked far too. Uh, he looked far Convincing. too. Uh, yeah, I'd, if, if I'd have had a couple of ciders, I'd have been right up his back passage. But, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think he'd have minded, to be fair. Um, a few people uh, actually amazingly have asked, been asking where Liam Dow was last week. <laughs> 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 I was quite. What's wrong? Wasn't I boring enough? Well, no, you? I think they like me having a side monkey. Ah. Um, yeah. And he, and he, and he uh, a couple of people described him as the tea boy and uh, Carl Pilkington, and he was livid at both of those. Um, but yeah, I like Carl Pilkington. Um, I like side monkey. <laughs> yeah. That's, well, you know, the cat fit. Um, so Liam will be back um, as soon as he stopped. Celebrating getting fucking married and realizes his pride, realizes pride is the little pube. <laughs> um, so yeah, other than selling cakes, uh, we watched SummerSlam, didn't we? Yeah, that was pretty great. We haven't watched the pay per view in a long time, that was quite good. What do you think of that? Uh, I, I thought it was an enjoyable show overall. I didn't rate either of the women's matches very much. Oh, there's a surprise. Well, no, they just don't have any synergy in their work. It's like they're doing the moves, but they don't understand like the bits that happen in between or like why they're doing it or any basic psychology. So that's like a really big turn off for me. It disappoints me that the crowd never seemed to get into them either. Right, no matter what. Why, why should why should they get into it if there's just literally like there's no story there? It's just move, move, badly executed move. Like why would anyone give a shit? About oh, that? it just seems the whole thing they tried to change them from being Davis. It just seems like. WWE don't, pen don't, pen lip service to the women. Oh, it's, don't say that it's a revolution when all it is is just the same shit but with longer airtime. Oh, I'm just amazed considering they've got Sarah Del Rey trading them, but she's obviously not as uh, shit as everyone thought. So bring back uh, 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 Dave Finlay, in my opinion. But there you go. Uh, um, but yeah, yeah. But I digress because many of you interrupted me. It's my, <laughs> it's my fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> might, be, might be your kitchen, but it's my show, dear. This is my fucking kitchen. <laughs> um, it's not, it's the Room of Doom. It's my kitchen. Okay. <laughs> You've seen behind the curtains. Delete, delete. Um, I loved the main event, however. I thought it was freaking fantastic. And I thought it was amazing to see the big guys fucking taking it home at WWE again. Because let's face it. For me, tuning in to watch a wrestling show, like, I don't want to watch Dean Ambrose turn up in a pair of jeans and a dirty vest, like, with all this contrived shit that just, like, just looks so fake and phony, man. The only thing I like about Dean Ambrose is that his surname reminds me a bit of Ambrosia, and I love rice pudding. You do love rice pudding. I do, and I like that, but other than that, he's a cunt. Do you remember that time you bought 12 tins of custard? No. Oh, Jesus, can I tell you something <laughs> I saw? Can I tell you something I saw today on my way to the gym? I haven't told you about this yet. Oh. Pulling up to the gym, I was really, really bad mood, and there was a fat woman standing up to the kebab shop with baked beans in her hair, screaming, and there was no one else in her. What? <laughs> oh, no. Why? How did they get in her hair? Welcome to Hastings. That should be the picture as you enter Hastings. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, I forgot to tell you that. I've been waiting all day to tell you that. And there I you need go. to know more information. Should have thought baked beans. But why? My mate Lawrence at the gym, so I should have shouted out, where have you been? Oh. Instead of, oh. I think you spoiled it now. Oh, anyway, so SummerSlam. Lawrence, you suck. So, <laughs> SummerSlam, great. Uh, what did you think? 
I thought, yeah, I thought the same as you. I thought the main event was amazing. It was nice to see the big guys steal the show and everyone went, where, where? There wasn't any kick pads and thigh slapping. It was great. They went out there. Everyone says they, you know, they don't do enough. They went out there and fucking did everything. So they can't win. But I thought it was awesome. And a lot of other people did too. Um, mainly the people that matter. Um, <laughs> uh, the, 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 uh, also, the big, it was the big fight uh, last night, the uh, Mayweather and McGregor. Um, any any thoughts? I thought that went exactly as I expected mm. and predicted it would go. And as much as I I really really wanted McGregor to win, I only said go over. But that's implying well, that that match was real. Well, well, it was. Of course, it was a work. <laughs> anyone who thought that was, anyone who thought that wasn't a work is off their fucking nuts. Oh man, the match was fake. Wrestling's fake. There's People no are fake. there's no way McGregor would have gone ten rounds with with with, with no. a well, professional he's, boxer. He's a, He's an MMA fighter, and just like you're used to short, punchy matches, right? He was allowed to, and on ten minutes, you saw the ref turn to take it over. It's simple as that. <laughs> um, and uh, the main thing I wanted to talk about is this thing that's come to light today with the footage of uh, sexy star supposedly breaking the arm of uh, Rosemary, who is, is that uh, a broken arm or a dislocated. Dislocated, shoulder? Shoulder. I've heard both, but uh, breaking the arm of Rosemary, who is. Uh, Courtney, Rush. Courtney Rush and Courtney Rush has gone on Twitter and everything else saying you know it's disgusting she's gone and done this she's taken liberties with me etc and some promoters and people I thought better of have gone and said oh blacklist her don't book her don't book her to me I think it's absolute bullshit I, you know people have been taking liberties in wrestling for years sort it out backstage if you don't fucking like it if you don't want to get a boo boo you don't want to get a potato you've got problems take it out Take it out in the back. You don't go on social media and start crying about it. If that's the sort of fucking lily-livered society we live in now, I don't want any part of it. You, you've got people like New Jack who were slicing people open with switchblades and smashing toasters over their heads, young kids, and he's still he's still out there on the independent circuit. Yeah, sexy stars going to get blacklisted. What do you think? Um, I would say that, one, we should consider that, like, why did she do that? Was there a real, like, did she just go out and do that? And also, like, we need to realise that only Sexy Star knows her motivation. So, she will know whether she did it on purpose. She will know whether it was a freak accident. And freak accidents can happen in the ring all of the fucking time. And if you're selling things with intensity and stuff, like, there's no way you can look at something and say, oh, that's real and that's you. Like, unless, like, you've just walked up to somebody and jawed them in the nose as hard as you fucking can. Um, So, like, I don't... Oh, I don't really, I don't like it for that reason. Also, like, I personally was brought up, as you know, not to be a fucking crybaby on social media if somebody gives me a boo-boo, but one, to get up and give them a fucking receipt, and two, to deal with it backstage like a fucking professional. Because our business is enough of a joke without people exposing it further like that. Like, oh, okay, she's giving me an injury. Oh, everyone ban her, ban her. Oh, I got hurt doing a fake sport. Like, that just us, makes us all look like a fucking bunch of clowns. And I don't like that. And also, just, like, you should be able to take care of yourself if you step in the ring. Like, just That's just what I think. Okay, I've had liberties taken of me, but I always, always fucking square it. And I do not go home without it being fucking sorted. And I certainly mm-hmm. don't go on social media like, oh, wow. Uh, Somebody hurt my feelings or somebody like, broke my fingers. I just, I've had some fucking shitty injuries. I think it's made a bit of a, even more of a joke of what we do. We spend an awful lot of time, uh, you know, convincing every, everyone of what we do. Yet, and then you've got someone who's supposedly, well, uh, you know, well uh, looked up to journey journeyman or journey woman of, of wrestling who's gone out and done that. And I've lost, no, you know, I've got no respect for that at all. And I, I'm amazed at the amount of people that have, uh, that have jumped on this. I think it's oh. it's just so... It's just so fucking fashionable to be outraged and scandalised by every, absolutely everything. And I've been surprised by who exactly has jumped on this. Yeah. Well, well, like, on behalf of all wrestlers. I, I've, there are certain promoters in the UK, like one in particular, that thinks that he speaks for all of the women in the country and was just like, oh, ban her, blackball her from your events. And let me tell you, you know who you are. You don't speak for all the women in the country. We had a meeting. It's official. Yes, exactly. <laughs> It's, it's fucking true. And like I said, I'd be even more inclined to book sexy star and stick... Stick her on with me. Yeah, exactly. We'll see if she can do you know choose. what I mean? Far, far, <laughs> from, uh, far from banner, book her more. I mean, if, that, if that's the case, do you well, know what I mean? you fucking know if she's dangerous. Yeah, I mean, you know, too many people have been too quick to jump on it. And 
I just think it's and also if she, if she has had this reputation of being dangerous why is I why have her, has her school and her coaches and everything not done anything about it because sure as hell people are like oh don't work with Scarlett she's fucking dangerous she'll break your face I will break your face but I'll, I'll only do it if you give me a reason oh but my mate um, Jim Hustle from The Rock Show quite rightly said he said well you know where was everyone when you know Bruiser Brody was there we were taping uh, Razor blows to his fingers, slicing the shit out of uh, Let's Luger. No, I mean, obviously, no there was no social media then, so <laughs> no, but people got really short fucking memories and uh, dislocated shoulder, whatever it was, you know, Jesus Christ, come on, get over but it. But I'm offended. Well, aren't we all? I'm, <laughs> I'm offended that you're offended. Well, it's your right to be offended, but how do I make this situation that isn't about me, about me? <laughs> well, <you're, laughs> I, you, I don't know. Well... But um, listen, that's enough of that. Um, earlier on, I had the opportunity to uh, interview my dear old tag partner, John Cosell. Um, uh, it it's was like a giant overgrown gathering of naughty boys. There was an awful lot of singing involved. Yeah, I fucked right off. There was, there was a lot of there was tears. There was back scratching. We were rolling down hell in a cloud of smoke. Oh, my God. Um, like Asking Dennis the Menace. I and mean, it was wonderful. But um, we're going to go to that now. And uh, hey, enjoy. I'm here right now with uh, one of my uh, very close friends in the wrestling business, my, uh, well, I say long-time tag team partner. We've been tag team now about two years, known as Critical Mass. This is uh, one of my uh, proudest protégés in wrestling, Mr. John Cosell, known as Titan. Hello, John. How's it going? You good? Yeah, well, yeah, you know what I'm going to ask about. I'm in your house. You're in your mouth. I just want to sound professional on your podcast, man. We're, we're, we're horrendous. You're, you're sick and, and I'm bung over. Yeah. I was. Uh, did you see the fight last night? I didn't. Um, I think it, I'm, I wasn't really interested, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I could be fucked. Uh, all I've been hearing is about the fight. So you were busy punching Irish oh, yeah, around the yeah. nightclub. I actually you? punched someone's head in last night. So, For real? So. If I actually did, yeah, not on TV. <laughs> but the, um, I, the, I, the problem is, there's. There was so, I go a certain way. I've heard so much about it. I was interested in it at first, and then everybody jumped on the bandwagon, and that's all I've heard. In the gym, in town, at work, on the train, on a bus, it's all I've heard. So I've just gone the other way, and I completely switched off. I just went to sleep. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Well, fuck that then. Yeah, absolutely. So there we go. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Um, any other news? No, so, uh, yeah, well, uh, let, t- well, tell us first of all um, all about your film work because a lot of people know, so some people don't know, that not only you're a wrestler, but you also uh, sort of made it from from uh, small movies to the big screen now. So tell us about uh, what you've been doing. I've, well, to be fair, I'm, I'm not an actor I'm, and I don't profess to be, but sometimes when the, your face fits the bill, you, you get the part, so... A mate of mine said suggested I used to work on a door with a guy called Adam Young. He was a, he's an actor and he and he's he's fucking hard as well. Um, I used to work with him years ago. He said to me, "You need to set up a a star now profile because you've got the you, you've got the look to do some some mm. film stuff." And I never I, I kind of thought you know I was I didn't have any money at the time and it was one of these websites where you set up kind of it cost you twenty five quid to set it up for six months and you don't know whether. You're, you're going to get something and you're not going to get something. But I set this profile up and they, uh, I had an email about two hours after on a Sunday afternoon saying, um, we're doing a film in London. It's called The Wee Man. This is, this is kind of 2011. They said, we're doing The Wee Man. Could you come down for a casting? We think you'd be good as one of the bodyguards to the main character. So they said, if you can be, if you can be in London within an hour and a half, we've seen your photos, we like you, providing you're not a complete idiot when you get there, which was I was worried about. <laughs> but um, I, I turned up and they cast me and I got the role. So, so you got the role as uh, uh, one of the main the henchmen to the main character, and that's a really really good film. If you haven't seen it, uh, it's based on uh, well, it's based on a true story about a, a notorious Scottish gangster. I've, I watched it with you. In fact, it was a hell of a. Uh, one of those films that you sort of are thinking about for days after you've seen it. It's quite horrible, but like I say, but after that, you, you sort of got on really well with the, one of the lead actors in there. That's you? right. I, I, I'd, um, it was John Hanna, who's, who's he was in the Mummy. He's done loads and loads of stuff. I'm sure you know him. Um, he kind of, I say, it was it was nice. It was good. He he, he directed me around and and was was very polite to me. Um, so. I got on well with him, and he said, "You're going to do well because you're polite and you're humble, and you 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 can talk well. You know how to talk to people." He said, "That's all you need to know." And he basically said, "The biggest bit of advice he said he said was just turn up, 
agree to everything and then do what the fuck you want. And that's basically that's and that's what I did. And I was I was lucky enough to I had three weeks on that. It was good money, and uh, it made number two in British box office just after um, Harry Potter. But there was I think it was the fifth or sixth film at the time. I say you're not going to top that, are you? No. But, I mean, you've got a very unique look. I mean. And people who don't know you, you're six foot seven, long blonde hair, you're built like a tank, you're only a young fella, but obviously you haven't got any tattoos, so you've got a very, very distinctive look, which is ideal for the sort of uh, sword and sandal movies that are coming out now. So then after that, um, you got uh, recommended for the Thor film, Thor 2. That was, yeah, I got I did Thor, we did um, quite a bit on that. I was There was a few scenes they cut, so it's, I'm in there fairly briefly, but I was one of the one of the bad guys at the beginning of the film, the, the, I think the best thing that came out of that was they scanned me for the video game. So they kind of put me, they took me into a, a studio room and scanned me from all different angles, running around, shouting, screaming, all that sort of stuff. So the Thor, I don't even know what game it is. I don't even play video games, but I'm guessing it was probably like Xbox 360 or whatever it was at the time. And uh, I was one of the, I suppose, one of the bosses at the end of one of the levels, you know, the big fucking guy that you end up smashing up if you're any good at the game. So that was the good. That was probably the best thing that came out of Thor. Then I did Macbeth with Michael Fassbender. Was that the one with the uh, <laughs> the, the horse in the water tank story? No, that was um, God. That was <laughs> I want to hear that again. That was um, oh, what was that? That was uh, Robin Hood. I was an extra, and um, that was the first was thing I ever did. Studio, wasn't it? Right, absolutely. It was. They did a. They had a massive tank. Of water, which was like a huge fish tank, but maybe you could fit twenty horses and thirty guys in, and everyone's swimming around, and all the stunt guys are swimming around, and everything like that. And uh, I don't know if you've ever had a shit in water. I have personally, but um, and on holiday when I couldn't make it to the toilet after eating some dodgy Mexican ribs. But basically, what happens when you have shit in water? No matter how liquid the shit is, it manages to stay whole. Um, and as you can imagine, horse shit in the water is fairly huge. Uh, one of the stunt guys was having a nice swim about, um, selling his fucking injuries whilst the horses were swimming around. And uh, one of the horses opened its arsehole <laughs> and um, emptied about 18 kilos of crap directly into this guy's mouth as he was swimming, <laughs> as he was swimming around. <laughs> and he ate the whole thing, the whole thing whole. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking impressed this dude with a ginormous horse cigar. I was yeah. laughing my head off. I was laughing oh, like mate. crazy. And then most recently, uh, the film uh, I know a lot of uh, friends of mine have seen him was the the Bourne film with Matt Damon. Yeah, that was good. That was I had two days on that. I was uh, I, I was uh, Christ Almighty. They cast me, and uh, they said they want Greek looking guys. Now, if any of you have seen me, I, I look uh, despite my olive skin. <laughs> Uh, the nose, I suppose. I suppose the nose, yeah. The crooked as fuck. I suppose the nose. I suppose it must be the nose. The nose it's got to be it, the mate. nose, mate. But no, they, they cast me in this... They're doing the fight scene. It was supposed to be Athens. I haven't even seen the film, but I've seen the clip of myself being narcissistical. But I've um, basically what it was, it was a fight scene, and as a friend of mine... um. Brian Nichols, who's who's a, who's a, who's a stunt man and he's fantastic, absolutely fantastic, and he's fucking hard as fuck as well. Um, he's he was fighting Matt Damon, and I was kind of one of the one of the other fighters that was ready to get in the ring with him. So that was cool. Spent two days with Matt Damon. It, it was his birthday, so we had some birthday cake with him, and uh, I ate most of his cake. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was good fun. That was that was cool. That was that was good fun. And you've had a lot of uh, sort of surreal. Uh... Things happen. I remember you hang, like, hanging out with Jan Collins and all sorts of weird things. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I was on the series two of the Royals, and um, I was uh, in the cut. I was part of the cast on that episode, and uh, I saw that the other week. Did you? I was on the other week, wasn't I? Oh, was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. What my episode? Yeah, oh, okay. I, I thought it was a, a fucking show was horrendous. I forced time to sit. Yes, through I'm not a fan of it. I, saw, I forced uh, time to sit through it so we could see you in episode. Yeah, right? yeah. But um, right, going on to. I uh, just want to talk about how you got in, into wrestling, really, because obviously um, the way you look and everything it reminds me a little bit of uh, Flatliner, because you've got such a huge presence and huge look. Right. You probably found yourself getting, you know, I, I would not want to say shortcuts, but leapfrogging quite a few people on the roster to higher levels of you know, of uh, celebrity on wrestling uh, shows, right. if you know what I mean, because yeah. of the way, the, the way you do look. 
Um, how did you a first get into wrestling and uh, b how you know people's attitudes towards you in it because because of your you I like know, your I like the way you're going with this. This is cool. Yeah, what it is, I was uh, on the door and um, I was working up in London, Sutton and Team and uh, Wallington, all those shithole areas. And uh, a couple of friends of mine in the bodybuilding business were doing a were doing a film, a short film, and they wanted me to be part of that film. They said, you, you know, you do us a favour. It's post apocalyptic. Grow your hair out a little bit, and because uh, I had short hair at the time, they said grow your hair out. It was just typical dormant goatee beard and a shaved head. Do you know what I mean? But um, I grew my hair out a little bit, sort of like just past my ears for this thing, and um, everybody on the door was like fuck, you should be a wrestler, you look like Triple H, you should be a wrestler, you should be a wrestler, you should be a wrestler. And I've always loved wrestling, um, but it wasn't, you know, and I always wanted to do it, but I never knew a way into it, and I never had a way into it. But these guys, they knew, um, uh, it, was, it was Charlie Rage, who's a friend of ours as well, um, in the business, he was he was running out in, in Essex. So Charlie kind of started to teach me, the wrestling. I was at Wrestle Force. Uh, yeah, school. yeah, the Wrestle Force school, which is a while ago now. Christ. Um, by this time, I sort of had like l- l- real long, long hair, and I was, I was, I was big. Learned some basic stuff. Um, we came down to Hastings one night. Uh, Stu had just would you just run a show? Would you just had a show? I think the first time I saw you was when we did a show for Charlie, and he introduced me to you. That's the first time we met, right? That was in uh, probably in Tamworth. I think or, it was, or, or maybe, maybe I think maybe I met you. Then I see you in Tam- Tamworth as well. Yeah, uh, one, one of the two. But the, the 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 great thing was I was training with Charlie, and obviously me and Stuart are very similar. He's he's become like, he's, he's become like a father figure to me. And this is the truth. I'm not just saying this because he's his podcast and I'm on it. But he has become a father figure to me, and and I love him very much. But we got on really well immediately. We got the same views on life, the same views on training, the same views on everything else. Um, so we just we naturally we we got on. And Stu literally, I remember one of the first things that I, I said to him. He said, "I'll put you on," because he he took one look at me and, and said in the bar, he said, "Look, I'll, I'll put you on my show." I said, "I'll be honest with you. I can do a clothesline. I can do a body slam, and I can run around and fucking shake the ropes like warrior." And he said, "That's all you need to fucking do." Uh, he said, "You look the bollocks. You 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 fucking in." And I, and I couldn't be happier. From that, that literally was was my was my I suppose my break in from that point of view. From coming in and only did a couple of shithole shows, and then all of a sudden I'm on one of the one of the best shows in the country with the best productions and the best storylines and everything else. So I was very lucky. But when you say about other people's attitude, um, yeah, I mean, how did you find? Uh, did you did you find uh, a lot of sort of jealousy towards you? Um, I don't know if it was jealousy, but I would say I would say so only because a lot of guys they don't get into wrestling because they're into into training and being big. They get into wrestling because they loved it as a kid and they always wanted to do it and be larger than life. But they're not larger than life. So when you walk into a locker room and all the guys around you are smaller, their attitude is to different towards you because here's this guy that's fucking come out of nowhere that's going to take my spot. So they're, they're not they're not necessarily. So friendly. I'm not saying they weren't friendly because they had to be fucking friendly. Because <laughs> if you're 11 stone and you're not friendly and you're rude, then you get slapped. It's fucking simple as that. And that's how I. That's you know, that's how I've always been. I'm always very polite and humble, but I don't take shit. And uh, I never did get shit. All I'm saying is, is that I was I was kind of put into a main event spot and given a lot of things that people take a lot of years to get. Like I was I was out of the, you know in my first year of wrestling. I was wrestling abroad. Um, in Austria, and then lots in France, and loads and loads of like, stuff abroad. But I was lucky enough to, a lot of guys, you know, I was explaining to my missus the other day, I was like, you know, a lot of guys never get the chance to go abroad. It's they, you know, they don't get, not, not even as far as France. Not Sometimes they don't even get out of the country, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I was lucky enough to do that within my first year of wrestling. I'm not saying I was any good at the time. I didn't re- hadn't really found my gimmick at the time. But I was, I was kind of a big jacked up kid that was cheap and... And would go over there and work and work hard. Well, the thing is, like, like you know, you, you you knew how to promote yourself. A mm. lot, a lot of the guys I still say to this day, you know, you, you're your own agent. If you're not going to promote yourself, no other fucker will. Absolutely, and that's right. like the one thing that you were that's always the... good at was to promote yourself. Yeah, and yeah. You got people that. like Flash in France, and you know, uh, you know, Silvano in Italy, Silvano in Italy, and, and uh, the Kovacs in Austria. Yeah. 
they see you and they're willing to get you know pay a few hundred euros to do it, do it, do it, you know a ten minute easy match. You're not going to turn it down, are you? Absolutely not. You know places like Europe, they still like the big guys, and I think this is a thing. I'm, I, I think the show needs everything, and then most shows do have everything. Um, but I think sometimes now it's kind of the way the business is is anti big guy because everyone's small, you know. And it sounds horrible, um, you know. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, chewing out anyone that's that's not a big jacked up guy because that's not what it's all about. But I think you have to look the part, you, you know. If you look like if 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 there's someone in the in the in the audience that could kick your ass, then you shouldn't be in the ring. I don't, I, you know, that's my opinion. Well, I, you know, we brought up this the, the week, like to SummerSlam last weekend, right? And it was so good to see, you know, the guys in the main event stealing the show. You know, four big fuckers, absolutely right. You know, absolutely. and it was really, really nice to see. And and, and everyone for some reason's anti the big guys, even though they're the guys who earn the money. Yep. And it's like you know they they went out there and kicked ass and did everything, and everyone was really. Uh, Almost disparaging in the fact that they, you know, that they had a five star match and oh, you know, oh fucking hell. Well, I suppose we all admit that was good. And yeah, yeah, yeah. heaping praise on people like Dean Ambrose, who to me is, you know, fucking, you know, if he, he's, he's cancer. I mean, he looks, he, he look, he looks like he looks like shit. Do you know what I mean? And everyone raves Absolutely. raves about him. I don't get it. I think it's one of those fatty things. I think, you know, like guys like like Daniel Bryan who came who came along and. He was like an underdog, and and everyone loved to 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 uh, be a part of it. And he was probably the first guy that had come off the independent scene, and then of, and then really headline WrestleMania. And I've got no problem with anyone that's done well. I've, I think I think that's good. If everyone's making money and everyone's doing well, then then I think it's better for wrestling all round. But when you watch WWE and you see some of the small, I don't really watch the current product. I just can- cancelled the Sky Sports because. I couldn't be asked to watch it week in, week out because it was the same shit, same format. Someone comes out, says something. Someone comes out, a couple of matches, female re- you know, re- revolution, which I don't think's ever happened. Um, because, you, you know, they're, they're, I know it's a, it's a subject close to Stu's heart is the female wrestling the, from the point of view that they should just be allowed to be wrestlers and, and, and that's that. Why, why not just be part of the show? And they're saying, oh, we're having this female revolution whereby we're still going to sexualize you because we're doing the diva show. But we're calling it something. Oh, we actually call it total divas or whatever yeah, that is. Yeah, it's just fucking. Lip you know, service, so they, so yeah, they take they take the sexuality off the off the WWE TV by saying, you know, they jumped on the bandwagon with the the, the equal rights. But at the same time, they're not actually enforcing that because they've got the total diva show where they've got. I've never watched it, but they've got all the girls round and they're all. It's a show, but basically aimed at looking at women. So. I don't think they've 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 revolutionised that, but also you look at a lot of the, the the real indie flippy guys that they've hired. Where are they? Where are they? They're they're injured all the time, um, and I think maybe they're realising they're going back to the big guys because they know that's the ones that those are the guys that ultimately sell the houses. Because the small guys, if if you know, it's all very well having someone doing incredible acrobatics, but eventually you break your leg or you break your arm or you, 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 you tear your knee out or your hip, whatever it is, you, you injure yourself and you can't do that anymore. So that's the, that's the thing. I mean, like D- Dean Ambrose for me, I mean, he, I think he's, you know, he just looks, he, everything about him looks sloppy. I just do not, I don't fucking get it. And I, if, like I said last week, if he was back in there, I put a thing out and on my Twitter and Facebook and said, you know, if that, if he'd have been in the late eighties, early nineties, he'd have been a knockoff, a three minute knockoff. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, a few people said, "Well, you, you do not like Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels." Well, they were jacked. No, yeah, up those guys. guys. Those guys were jacked. They you, they you had can, fantastic you, physiques. Yes, they were small guys at the time, but that's in comparison to Hulk Hogan, yeah, and the and, Warriors. And Nash you know what I mean? It's, yeah, absolutely. So, but they, so they weren't small fucking guys. No, like, everyone says, "Oh, Rey Mysterio." He's not. He, you know, if you see Rey Mysterio, yeah, sure, he's jacked. Yeah, absolutely. He's still you a know, big he, guy. he looks great. He looks like an action figure. Absolutely you know what I mean? right. Absolutely. Like, and and that's what I think. Um, you know, you see guys that just look like I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. Uh, okay, this, this is the way I, I, I like to rationalise it. You look at the action figures. Now, doesn't matter how skinny the guy is, his action figures always jacked. Why? Because the jacked up action figures are the ones that kids pick in the shops and buy them. Yeah, you, you're, you're. You, I think if if that is the way they're going with the action figures and in the video games, they're all still big jacked up guys. They're still portraying this larger than life thing, but they haven't got larger than life guys. Um, so 
that's that's my opinion of that. I think I, I wish them all the best with that product, but I honestly think that they'll, as they are, you said with the, the main event of SummerSlam, I haven't seen it, but the big guys ruled the show, and I like that. That's, that's, I'm not saying because I, I'm I'm sure that some guys, people will be listening and going, oh, you know, they're going to get hurt here in this, but you know, because the, the fact we got two big guys on the podcast talking about big guys, because that's that's what we're into, that's what we grew up with, that's what we like, and that's who we are, but. Sometimes, if you look at the bigger picture, it needs everything. And when they're saying that you, you, you know, what you got the circus, you got your acrobats, you got your, you got your big strongmen, you got your freaks, you got your your your, your clowns, everything else, and it all part makes part of the show. Well, you so, look, you look at, uh, you know, you look at, I'd say, seventy percent of wrestling posters in the UK, and it's just. You know, to me, it's, it is like the kids from Grand Jewels flat on the says, and it's absolutely well. You know, it was, we're going up to do a show in Gosport on on Wednesday, and it's like flat on the says. It's like you know, you, everyone knows the circus is in town, right? Absolutely, and because you know, you when 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 you have a, an in, indie show, and you know, the the their the local their their names over here, and that's great, and and um, they're making them, they you know, they they're, they're making their mark. It's cool, but if you're put promoting a show and and it's not they're not wrestling fans. These people they want to see people that they wouldn't usually see in everyday life. They want to see big jacked up guys, if you, you you know midget tag partners and spitting fire and all that kind of stuff because it's a spectacle. So when everyone says, "Oh, it's, oh, you know, you're backwards because you're stuck in the '90s watching, you know, reliving what doing what you, you saw," but I think there's a massive amount of um, there's a massive amount of uh, of of money to be made for big guys, you, you, and it's not just WWE. You know, you like I, I think that that people the the thing I love about being part of this at the moment is that wrestling is is going. It's kind of like back to that territory thing where. You work at a certain place. You work there. You work there. We're working for WAW a lot, other than EW uh, in, than uh, EWW, and I like WAW. They've got they've got everything. They've got big guys, small guys, and they sell so much. The the locals around there they love the product. They love it, and they they're invested in it. They 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 sign up monthly for for tickets like it's a subscription job, and that's great. I think that's amazing. There's there's other guys in. Like my friend is Sam Sam Elias. His brother is, is Corey Graves, and he's an announcer. But I think Sam Sam's doing fantastically. I follow him on on Facebook. I've I worked with him in Italy years back now. But he's he's a second generation guy. His, his dad's his dad was a, a wrestler and, and a promoter as well. And and he's always been no bullshit. And he's been in Mexico. He's their hottest hill, and I think that's fantastic. He's over in all Japan now, doing really really well. So there's money to be made. Places away from from WWE and TNA and all those other well you know WWE really because that's that's the one, but I'm I'm so glad that there is money to be made elsewhere, um, where you don't have to conform and brown nose and and all that kind of stuff because that's that's it's refreshing to see, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, fucking right. Because if you know, it's more places for us to go, more, more, more of the world to see and and experience and experience what it was like. You know, I was talking to uh, Martin Stone um, a, a year or so ago, and he was saying that, uh, you know, he said it was, you know, the way, you know, the way he was treated, and I, I know, uh, I know he's back there now, but I, I can't remember the name of the geezer who was, who was there. I was Bill Demott. Um, uh, you waited for him backstage when he came through the curtain and cracked him around the fucking head. Yeah, no, and I mean, you, you've got to, you've got to be able to swallow a lot of fucking pride to not turn around and give that cunt a dry one. Haven't Absolutely, you? I would if never that be spoken to, me to or you. No, 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 there'd be, be, be a fucking then, bloodbath. I would never yeah. ever allow anyone to speak to me like that. And I think to a degree, it's you know that's, uh, you know, it's this, uh, you know, it's a blessing in disguise that you probably. Uh, I mean, I know you, uh, you know you've had a WWE trial, but I think you'd probably, you know, I think you'd probably last there two fucking weeks. Yeah, I, th- I think probably you're right because uh, you know there, there's paying your dues and there's being respectful, polite, and humble, and then there's being being bullied. And if if you're gonna, there's no way I would go abroad and let someone bully me. 
if they're given if they've given you a job, they're giving you a job because they like you. They know you're going to do good business. They're going to and you're going to put money in their pocket if you you know by 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 paying you fuck all and smacking you up every every now once in a while you know and they've all and it's all been brushed under the carpet and oh they just released the guy oh we're just sorry we just got to release him because there's a rumor that he's a bully they know what's going on um but my problem is most guys they they're so desperate for that spot they'll 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 put themselves for anything and I, I think I think that's wrong if if people stood up to that and didn't and were like you're not fucking treating me like that then I don't think it would it wouldn't happen and uh yeah it's just a shame I just I I, I would like to see because you, like WWE do they come over here and they've done the UK thing and uh, from what I hear W you know they they ran in WAW's arena which is very very odd they've never ran anywhere close to there before but where we do the tapings for WAW they all of a sudden turned up and and uh and put a WWE live show on because they're concerned. Be and it's probably, the, you know, I'm just so happy that that concern is coming from the United Kingdom because I, th I think we have our own product and they're worried about it. Well, we, we're drawing houses over here that's better than anywhere now. Absolutely. Up and down the country. I've, so I've said this before and it's uh, it's obviously something that's concerning them and, and rightly so. Yeah. Um, just before we wrap this up, I just wanted to, um, you know, I say to you, obviously, you've got a lot of strings to your bow. A lot of people don't know about your, um, you know, you're, you're a, a fully qualified armor, aren't you? Yeah, I've uh, I, I was involved in reenactment. I'm involved in the reenactment um, circuit in the UK, and I always loved armor and swords and that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I never had the money to buy it. So if you don't have the money to buy it, in my opinion, you have to you have to make it. So I started making armor, and it was the, obviously the first few things I made were horrendous. But now I've supplied museums and reenactors and English heritage. I'm teaching at a college. I teach um, 15th century armour reproduction at a, a college at Brinsby, Brinsby campus, which is part of Chichester College. That's quite a big deal. From what I'm aware, I think it's probably the only armour course in Europe. I don't think they do it. I think there's a couple of guys in the States that are fantastic that teach armour. Um, but I don't think they do it. I don't, I've not heard of any in Europe, so I think that's... I might be Europe's only course, but obviously, and not only course, but it's I'm teaching at a college, which is which is unheard of. So they they gave me the job there, and I love it. I've got I've got kind of eight students. They've all got projects on, uh, generally fifteenth century armor that they're 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 making. Some of some of the guys wanted to do earlier stuff like Viking stuff and early Saxon helmets, and I can help them with that, and that's not a problem. We make the pattern, and off they go and. I guide them through it, and they make this thing, and they get to take it home at the end. So it's a nice. Uh, I should imagine it's a nice uh, problem to have. You think, well, you, you know, if the wrestling doesn't work out, yeah, and you've got several other. I mean, you like say yeah. the, uh, the session drummer for Will Young. As yeah, well. I've done some stuff for Will Young on drums. Just rattling off all these fucking yeah, things. Yeah, it's cool. Matter of fact, but I mean, there's so many things that you are yeah. very talented at at a stupidly young age. You've done more, I'd think, in your years and a lot of people have done in their whole lifetime right. so I mean it's nice to know if the rest in, you know don't work out well, you've, said, you know, avenues, you've yeah. already made an awful lot of memories and a lot of people happy doing it it's nice yeah. to know you've got all these other uh, facets of your absolutely and you plus know. I think it's I think it's important to have other interests as well because if your sole interest is, re is wrestling wrestling reading, totally the, agree. reading the dirt sheets reading the magazines getting involved online or worrying about what people think of you you know like I've been online and I've seen oh critical mass oh, they're, they're road warriors rip offs yeah fucking right we are <laughs> I don't, I, I, and as far as I'm concerned that's a compliment yeah that's why I was uh, sometimes backstage I find it difficult to fit in a lot of the time because you know you just uh, you you know, it's 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 nice to get away from wrestling a little right, bit. Right, absolutely. It? I think nine times out of ten, when we're in the locker rooms, we go and find us. We you know, we say hello to the boys and we we shake everyone's hand and we're absolutely respectful. But sometimes we just like to just go in our room, sit there, have a drink, talk, 
amongst ourselves, talk shit, have a laugh, and then once we've done our job, we we chill out, we get our clothes changed, and off we go. I think wrestling really should be belt to belt, shouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, otherwise, it's you know so many nasty politics and everything it can eat eat you up. And... Yeah, I mean, I think we're lucky enough that people don't get involved, get uh, us involved in their politics because no. it's not going to go particularly well. And I think, as well, <laughs> as well, you know, it's. It's a nice thing for you to have because you know you, you can pick wrestling up and put it down whenever you want to. Absolutely, I think that's 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 the thing. Like I'm always offered to go abroad, and you know, Michael Kovac, who's a very big name in Europe, he's very been very Who? Good to me. Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> he's been he's very, a crazy guy. He's a crazy guy. He's, he's a, a party, party guy. He's a party guy. He's a party guy. He's a party guy. He's a party guy. He likes to, he likes to get his dick out. Yeah, party. <laughs> <laughs> But he's 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 cool. He's been very very good to me, and he he books me. He's like you're a big white fuck, and I want to book you, and I want to <laughs> put you on a poster. I'm like that's fucking great. And he, they put me, they you know, they, it's old school hotel. They take you to the party afterwards. You 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 wrestle. You they feed you. They everything's free. It's good fun, and that's that's great. And plus, also you you like while I was I was in a big top tent in 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 Vienna. It was massive, maybe three thousand people in this thing. Uh, in the middle of the, the biggest theme park in Europe, which I never knew existed, was a. Uh, it's it's in Austria and it's been there for two hundred and fifty years. This massive, massive theme park. It's kind of like twenty times the size of Thorpe Park. Um, I went out there with Yesin Reese, who's another British name who I really respect. He's a lovely guy. He's got a fantastic physique and he's a fantastic worker. So if you're listening, then yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I'm praising you because you you look fantastic and you look the bollocks. Uh, we went out there. We 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 had loads of fun. Yestin had to fly five in the morning to Scotland from Austria to go and work for ICW because they're drawing really well out there. And he and, and so, yeah, it's, it's good to see that everything's doing well and everyone is doing well as well. So I'm, I'm very happy to be a part of this sort of wrestling revolution. Uh, it, might, it won't last forever because it never does. But whilst it's there, we need to, we need to Absolutely. capitalise Absolutely, it's a bit of that. a golden age at the moment. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, for, it's fun to be uh, doing it along with you, mate. But mm. thank you ever so much for your time, Dave. No, I've never a problem. Really appreciate to come back. it. And uh, we're going to head down to the academy now and uh, smash some skulls in. Yeah, throw, throw some uh, little, little baby birds' bodies about and uh, have some fun down there. But thank you very much again, uh, Mr. John Cosell. Now, let's thank have a quick much, song. Everybody squirts sometimes because everybody squirts. Sometimes. Sometimes. How, how fucking good are we? Absolutely. Fuck me. Watch All this podcast now. All the best. Thank you, Flatliner. Well, that's it for uh, episode three of uh, Stiff Right Hand. I hope you've enjoyed that this, uh, again this week. Uh, thanks to my guest, uh, Titan John Cosell. Um, also, I want to thank uh, a good friend of mine, Leeville. Uh, he's the guy who's uh, made the new stiff right hand theme tune you listen to at the beginning of the show awesome he's a he's a horrible little uh cockney reprobate and he uh, does a lot of live gigs as one man noise machine he's um i think that i like to call him a cross between trent Reznor and nine inch nails and uh apex twin um he's a right little nutter and if you get a chance to see any of his gigs please do so um went to see him at the purple turtle in camden and uh few years ago and he's absolutely awesome uh he's got a cd coming out as well which we're going to be plugging on there but thank you leville for doing the theme tune for us love you lots brother and congratulations on the birth of your new baby uh other than that uh not too much else to say other than thank you again for listening guys uh we're going to be going as of, uh going to be going fortnightly after this episode uh so coming to you uh once every two weeks and People have been sending me messages saying, can we ask you questions? When can we send them in? Just send them in, whether it's on my Twitter, um, uh, uh, EWW underscore Dominator, or uh, Facebook, or the podcast, uh, Stiff Right Hand um, Facebook page. Uh, Send send any questions you want, and I shall answer them. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you in a fortnight's time. So thanks again for listening, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And toodle pip. Stiff right hand.